We're going to just talk briefly about this one. Interesting, if you guys would do me a favor, go ahead and pick up a pencil and hold it in your hands how you would normally begin to write a sentence. Okay? Just maybe scribble, write your name. Okay. Now, if you are finished with that, I want you to go ahead and put your pen or pencil in your other hand. Okay. Now, does it take you a minute or two to get it, like, how do you adjust how you would hold a, a pencil with your, a pen or a pencil with your other hand? Does it feel natural? No. It feels very new. Okay. Now, the reason we're going to talk about this is a few different things. One, likely that the people that he had sitting for him had never held a pen before. Not like they were sitting down every day and writing letters to their family and hopping on Facebook and checking their messages. It's very likely that this is a person sitting for him who's never held a quilt pen before. Okay? It could have also been the fact that there's an object called the camera obscura. Has anyone, not, anyone ever heard of the camera obscura? Yeah. Okay. What was the camera obscura? Do you know? It was like a box where you look in and you can change things about the image. You look into the box and it gets smaller. And very close, yes. What it is is we know that a couple hundred years ago in the 19th century, photography was invented. Okay? Photography that was recorded on, you know, acid plates and photography that was eventually recorded on paper and there was black and white photography and we know now I mean digital photography think about how many pictures you take of yourself it's amazing but the idea of recording photography of actually being able to record photography goes back another two centuries okay it goes back to the 17th century and maybe maybe earlier where you could take a box and if you guys can imagine just like a cardboard box and you just turn it upside down like a packing bag. And if you poke a pinhole with your pencil through one side, and then you cut a hole out of the other side and put some kind of a lens. It could be a camera lens. It could be a lens from your glasses. It could be a piece of glass, very likely. Okay? If I shine a light as bright as I can through this pinhole, and I have my lens on this side, if I look from above, like cut a hole from above, and I look down in there, what am I going to see? Anybody? And I will see an image. I will see whatever on the other side of that lens. And it's really interesting because the way that lenses and glass and reflection works is you can put different mirrors and angles, and there's all these different versions. And what you were saying, larger and smaller, if the lens may have been convex or concave, um, it would have changed things, okay? It can skew the image. But the idea was that you could record an image. Now, they hadn't figured out how to make light and acid and all these things that we know now, like, like photography, like paper paper, to record it on there and to print it out. But you could very easily pick up a pencil and do what? Trace. Very good. So the idea here is that there was one stipulation. It reversed the image. All right? It was like a mirror image. So when historians were figuring, like, coming about, like, I don't know, it's like, it's just so weird how they were just so good with perspective so long ago, and it was like this huge jump, bad perspective, bad perspective, really good perspective all of a sudden. But at the same time, it was right hand, right hand, right hand. Why is everyone left-handed? All of a sudden, people are going, hold on, they're all holding the apple, they're all holding the pencil, they're all doing this and that and the other thing with the left hand. When, raise your hands in here, how many of you are left-handed? How many of you are right-handed? Okay, that gives you guys an idea. There was like, somebody said, wait a minute, that's not right. And that helped to prove the theory, absolutely, who used a camera obscura and who did not use a camera obscura. All right, and so it was interesting because a lot of times you can say, oh, you know what, she is using her right hand, but that very well could actually be her left hand. And that's why she's holding that awkwardly, because she typically writes with her right hand. If she was holding it in her right hand, it would have appeared to be her what? Her left hand. Does that make sense? So that was like a major turn in like the art history. But also, when we look at the non-fictional person of Jan Vermeer, very smart. Very, very smart. Again, the analytical part of him, the thinking things through, those things all now kind of creep to the front of his paintings. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
and there is there will that end I'll kind of show you the so-called proof this again just kind of shows you that the I'm seeing something I'm not supposed to see kind of the things in front like the blockades or the obstructions that kind of block him thing they're not looking at him so to speak but it's funny because think back to the other one where the girls clearly looking at him that t tells you Van Reen was like hello I want everybody to see this everybody look at me look what I'm doing does that make sense again all of all in conveying in that passive-aggressive unspoken this is what I want people to know about me okay uh, this I want you guys to just imagine the very first time you ever did a painting when you were younger I want you to think about the clouds and the sky we always did our sky what and we always did our clouds white right they're like the little white puffy things who did the McDonald's birds do you know what I'm talking about? The birds. I did like 87 McDonald's birds on like all of my drawings. Like I had birds aplenty. My dad was concerned I was like seeing the bird movies or something. Birds all over. I was so excited about the birds. And then you got to like where you got over the McDonald's birds and then it was like the wavy birds. I mean, it's really funny to kind of look at that progression. But our clouds, remember like when you're younger, they all, we, they looked like little puffy. We would see them on Super Mario Brothers and you would, you know clouds and if I ask you guys what color are clouds white all right what color is her headscarf white all right now let's look is that white is that white all right is that white that is white all right it's really interesting uh, Jan Vermeer nonfiction brilliant at painting light he's painting white using olive and red and brown and yellow and blue and hints of red he's using all of these colors to paint white which is really hard to explain and being that I teach art foundations and I have some of you and I've had some of you in the past you guys know when I try to teach color to try if I would have told you you know what Yifang you're gonna paint this and you're gonna paint this and it's gonna be white and you're gonna use these colors Jessica, you would look like I was crazy. I'm like, what are you? What are you thinking? That is, that, we need white. Where's the white? You can't use white. And so it's amazing to think like how he could see shadows, and and you can't pick that up with a camera obscura. So talent-wise, he was an exceptionally talented.